My name is Greg Remke with Economic Thinking, and this is part two of a presentation given at the Ex Marseille Summer University on healthcare reform and nutrition policy. I ended the first segment with this overhead of Nina Teicholtz giving a presentation at the Cato Institute from her book, The Big Fat Surprise, introduced by Terence Keeley, author of Breakfast is a, Most, is a Dangerous Meal. Terence Keeley discusses his history and his theories of uh, the myth of scientific objectivity in a presentation at CrossFit Health in 2019. The link here is to the video. The first 12 minutes gives a broad overview of problems with uh, scientists uh, uh, misleading with their healthcare data and other issues. He talks about the model builders who have a models trying to uh, emulate reality and their they t he argues many adjust their data sets. That is, they sort of push out outlying data points that don't seem right, but in fitting their data sets of their theories, they mislead themselves often and others. And this applies to healthcare uh, models, climate models, financial models, and public health models in general, and very much to nutritional uh, data. And we have theories of energy policy and food energy policy, again, theories that are misleading. Uh, this book, which Dr. Keeley doesn't mention, but looks at this titled Escape from Model Land, Mathematical, Mathematical Models Can Lead Us Astray. So I recommended that book or uh, articles about it. So the story Dr. Keeley tells in his presentation and Nina Teicholz relates in her presentation at Cato is the story of physiologist Ansel Keys, the sort of powerful political entrepreneur who pushed the idea that saturated fat was the cause of heart disease, sort of an epidemic of heart attacks and cardiovascular disease in 1960s America. He believed that saturated fat was clogging our arteries and pushed the government, uh, particularly Senator Govern, McGovern and the McGovern hearings, hearings, to push the dietary guidelines and call for the food industry to introduce a wide array of foods that were low fat so Americans would reduce the fat in their diet. But when you reduce fat, protein stays about the same, you're essentially increasing carbohydrates. So it's the increase in carbohydrates and our ability to manage those carbohydrates, it's considered a contributing force in the epidemic of chronic disease. Uh, Ansel Keys was specifically attacking uh, John Yudkin, a British uh, a nutritional biochemist who argued it's the strong increase in sugar consumption that was causing much of our health problems. Again, it's in the dose. Uh, sugar is okay, but too much sugar is not. And the argument of sugar consumption had gone up dramatically in the previous hundred years as people got wealthy and people were eating more and more sugar. And now we eat far more sugar than our grandparents or their grandparents did. And of course, food isn't, sugar isn't much of the food we eat, the processed food that includes vegetable oils and sugar as it tries to make food appealing when the fat is taken out. Many of the desserts taste far better with fat. Uh, with the fat out, they don't. So in school, students won't drink the skim milk or 2% milk, but if it's chocolate milk, that is with lots of sugar in it, it's more appealing, so students drink that. But it's illegal to even sell whole fat milk in American schools. It's still part of the continuing fat phobia, war on sugar. And Yetkin writes about sugar in this book much long time ago, and then Robert Lustig and others are doing research on the dangerousness of excess sugar consumption now in America. So this draws also, though the earlier authors don't mention this, I've long been impressed with the work of Dr. Roger Williams, a University of Texas biochemist, discoverer of many of the uh, uh, fatty acids early on. His book, Nutrition Against Disease, published in 73, went through 10 printings through 1981. He talks about the problems our medical education for doctors doesn't include enough on nutrition, and still today, very little nutrition education for doctors focused more on the uh, pills and surgery that are treating symptoms, critics say, rather than the underlying nutritional causes of most diseases. He also focuses, Dr. Williams does, on biochemical individuality, that people are very different uh, in the nutritional, their nutritional needs and how their body works, even their anatomy. 
So there's a heredity factor in people's nutritional needs. So he says there's new hope for better health through changing our diets, improving our diets, protecting our hearts, fighting obesity, prevention of dental disease, uh, immune diseases like arthritis, he argues, are uh, dietary related. And even a uh, cause of mental disease tied with nutrition and alcoholism, which is, I'm, I'll mention later in the presentation, now being uh, uh, encouraged by research from Metabolic Mind and the Bazooki Fund. So back to the, the history of this. Also, this is part of the Progressive Era Project, which is a push toward calorie counting, the idea that the Women could uh, reshape themselves by dieting, becoming slim, wearing elegant clothes like rich people, and this disciplining the stomach that we could through willpower lose weight. And uh, this author, Lulu Peters, very popular, says we just need to count calories. The key is the calories. So count your calories and lose weight. But as this research uh, paper from Jin Jo uh, uh, finds, the letters to her, many, many Americans, thousands, tried and just couldn't. They couldn't discipline their stomach. They drove themselves crazy uh, trying to lose weight because what happens is that when you try and lose weight by not eating until you're full, until you're satiated, you're triggering your body, your metabolism to think you're starving, which was happened much in world history. Societies would starve from lack of food. So they would, um, your body downregulates your metabolism. People feel cold and ill, and then they start gaining weight on the same calories. So it's important to eat till you're full rather than to try to diet and discipline your stomach. This author also talks about how the, the, the health, public health problems in urban America, partly contributed to by federal government programs that funded studies, that funded fast food restaurants in inner cities owned by minorities, but would not fund grocery stores through just an accident of the Small Business Association definition of companies that had to do with total sales rather than profits. So grocery stores had total sales that were too high and wouldn't qualify for uh, support from the Small Business Association, but fast food franchises would. So now we have a culture of fast foods in urban America that we would not have had otherwise. And the history of the uh, dietary guidelines also rests on the American Dietitians Association in 1917. This is a, a presentation by Belinda Fetke, uh, who, whose husband was attacked by, uh, uh, by promoting uh, reduced fats in the diet. The dietary, uh, diet, American Dietitians, founded by a protege of John Harvey Kellogg, the Kellogg brothers were Seventh-day Adventists, blending science, religion, and philosophy to promote vegetarianism, the Garden of Eden diet that the Seventh-day Adventists uh, felt was healthier, arguing it reduced it lust and other uh, 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 untoward behavior in men, aggression, and so forth. So there's a history of vegans and vegetarians and, and mixture with left-wing ideology, which is not to say that vegans or vegetarians or somehow have to be left-wing today. It's just that from the French Revolution, the British left, leftist organizations were promoting a plant-based diet, arguing there was violence or patriarchy inherent in uh, killing animals. So uh, there's more of this discussion in this article, and there's books on this history as well. Uh, and again, I mentioned earlier the idea of intuitive eating. These two books say the importance is not to diet. You should eat with your eat till you're full. You know, have an egg, but don't get hungry. Uh, so anti-diet and intuitive eating are saying for young people, you're damaging your health if you diet. You'll actually reset your metabolism in a for a, a lifetime if you lose a lot of weight through dieting through just being hungry. Catherine Chenahan and her recent book. Uh, and she's a medical doctor and researcher. Her first, her major book is uh, Deep Nutrition, and the new book focuses on how vegetable oils, seed oils, industrial seed oils, which are new in the world, developed first as an industrial lubricant a century ago, became a major source of oils in our diet, in our packaged food and cooking. And this has to do with the excess uh, omega-6 versus omega-3, causing inflammation and contributing to a range of chronic conditions. And more, you can read more about her book uh, online and in the podcast uh, uh, Substack page. 
So the core idea I'll leave with this segment is this idea of uh, energy balance theory, which is the status quo in healthcare and nutrition uh, advice and the federal government dietary guidelines versus hormones. The idea that insulin is the driver of obesity and type 2 diabetes. And we're uh, doctors used to understand that if someone wanted to lose weight, like the Banting diet in the 1860s, they just cut back on starches on potatoes, bread, pasta, and rice, just reduce carbohydrates in the diet uh, and the weight just falls off. Eat more meat and more your calories from meat and fat. So the argument is the federal government pushing the dietary guidelines and low fat diets in the 1980s pushed the American public to reducing average calories from carbohydrates in our diet to some, from some 40% as it was until the 1980s up to 60%. And that overconsumption of carbohydrates uh, was linked to this insulin problem and people are not being able to manage the carbohydrates and causing insulin resistance and cerebral incident, insulin resistance for uh, brain energy problems and uh, uh, brain energy health. So discussed in this article in uh, Journal of Clinical Nutrition, the carbohydrate insulin model, tragically flawed, derailed the science of obesity for decades in America. It used to be understood in the 40s and 50s that if you wanted to lose weight, you'd cut starches. And this was the uh, became the Atkins diet, but he didn't invent it. He learned that from people who were prescribing that to DuPont executives and others uh, in the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s. So David, this isn't a fringe idea. This is David Ludwig at Harvard Health, Eric Westman at Duke, Mark Hyman at the Cleveland Clinic, Stephen Finney at Ver Verta Health. This is a major uh, approach, though not the majority in the status quo. So I write about this just as a survey, and the idea is they've tried for decades to find data to support this. They haven't, and they've excluded data that shows that a low carbohydrate data resolves type 2 diabetes and obesity in many or most Americans. That data has been systematically included, and it's necessary for improving America's healthcare system. We can drastically reduce healthcare costs and improve people's health by just telling them the truth, telling them what the science shows. So for students debating this topic, uh, don't take my word for it, or even these experts, research this on your own and understand the debate over uh, dietary policy today, uh, and I'll continue on this in the next session. Thank you.